Anti gravity is one of those concepts that appears a, a lot in science fiction and it does challenge our concept of gravity in the way that we understand it. I mean, we could argue we don't really understand gravity at all, but anti gravity really captures the imagination because it envisions technologies that work against gravity, allowing objects to levitate. And of course, that's immediately useful, because if you can levitate it, well, you can move it really, really easily. And so scientists have made various efforts to look at ways that anti-gravity could come out of the pages of science fiction and be real life. And here we're thinking about things like ionic lifters or maglev or sonic levitation. These are practical ways that have been explored but have never been put into a practical application. Of course that's not strictly true. Maglev has actually been put into operation on trial trains and there are two main ways of doing it. One's called electromagnetic suspension and the other is called electrodynamic suspension. In electromagnetic suspension Two opposing magnets create fields that suspend the train and of course once it's suspended then it loses all of its friction or at least a huge amount of its friction and that enables a smooth ride and very high speeds. Electrodynamic suspension however relies on the fact that when you pass a magnet over a coil you will create a magnetic field in that coil so onboard superconducting magnets create that field and that lifts the train. The problem with them is either way you go, it's incredibly expensive in terms of materials, in terms of control systems and the amount of power that it uses, meaning that on the whole they're not really implemented. Now it would be great and get rid of that problem of the power consumption, certainly if all we could needed to do was stack two permanent magnets on top of each other and got them to repel, but unfortunately of course you can't actually do that. You could try this one for yourself. If you do it, the magnet will shoot off in one direction. Now you can stop it doing it by putting a pole up the center, in which case you'll get a kind of levitation. But this idea that a static magnetic or electric force cannot be balanced one on top of each other, that is, they can't create a stable equilibrium, was voiced by Samuel Earnshaw in the 19th century, and it carries his name. It's called the Earnshaw Theorem. It states that it's impossible to create a stable system consisting only of static electrostatic or magnetic forces. You can do it if you have a dynamic system. And this is where those floating world models come in. Underneath the base plate, there is a set of coils switching off and on to create a dynamic, a dynamic magnetic field that levitates things like the model of the Earth. And that was the state of play until 2021 when a Turkish electronics engineer called Hamdi Unkar demonstrated that there was another way. What he showed was that simply by spinning a permanent magnet at around about 200 hertz, you could get it to exhibit a gravity defying levitation. And the surprising thing was that this is really stupidly easy to do with things that you can just pick off the shelf. The spinning of the magnet is what stabilises it rather than having to have expensive switching off and on with lots of power and of course that has far-reaching consequences. A research team at the Technical University of Denmark have picked up on Hamdi's original concept to expand on it and investigate it further. The university's research published in October 2023 not only showed the simplicity of the idea, but also its reproducibility, and then went to a great deal of trouble to work out what the physics involved actually was. The spinning rotor magnet, which is driven by a motor, keeps another floater magnet levitating because the floater magnet frequency locks with the rotor magnet and the magnetization of the floater is oriented close to the axis of rotation and towards the like pole of the rotor magnet. Now this frequency of rotation changes as the mass or size of the magnet changes but the same effect happens. The floater aligns its magnetization perpendicular to the magnetic field of the rotor and that is contrary to magnetostatic laws. Magnetostatic laws state that when magnets are over each other they shouldn't hover, they should either attract or repel each other but the spinning of the one 
achieves that hovering. But as one of the lead physicists, Frederick Laus Derhaus, pointed out in the paper, the key highlight in the experiment is demonstrating magnetic levitation and how exceedingly simple it is to realise. Because basically what's happening is as the rotor rotates, the magnetostatic field is both attracting and repelling the floater magnet at the same time, and this is completely counterintuitive. So I'll put the links to the paper in the video description because it is ARCSIV and so you can read it, it's open source. And if you fancy giving it a go, of course, just grab yourself a Dremel and a couple of magnets. Now, you might have noticed it's on an aluminium plate and that aluminium plate does perform a function. It gives it an initial kickstart to actually get the levitation going. But what's fascinating about this, of course, is it's at its early days. Now, at the moment, it's seen as doing things like molecular trapping or maybe touch-free robotics something like that but it was only discovered a couple of years ago and so the sky is going to be the limit on this as people develop it of course spinning a magnet requires much much less power than creating a magnetic field and so it brings a real anti-gravity device magnetic levitation device within reach of usability and that's what's kind of exciting about it the other thing that's really interesting about it is it does also illustrate how little we know when how much we think we know because this is counterintuitive to magnetostatic laws. Of course, Earnshaw's theorem can be thought of as covering it because a dynamic system is any system that moves and we're spinning it so it's still a dynamic system. But even so, it is counterintuitive. It is against the laws that we thought we understood we clearly don't know as much about magnets as we might think we do, and it was fascinating to discover that. So I wanted to share that with you for all of those reasons. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.